tutorial, we are going to implement a life system by using a lies variable, and we're going to represent it by using some hearts. So what I've done already, I've imported a picture of a heart here, and I've named this S heart. Please feel free to draw whatever object you want. I've called it S heart. It could be called S lives. In fact, for this tutorial, let's call it S lives. Okay, so we've got S lives there now, which is represented by a heart. Let's make the object. So what I'm gonna do is on the objects, right click, create and go to object. We're then gonna bind the sprite together. And what we're gonna call is call this O lives. Right, next I'm gonna to go to my room and I'm gonna make a new layer. And I'm gonna right click on this new layer and call it lives. And we're gonna just drag in O lives. Now, what we need to do is have the game so that when the player and the enemy collide, a life is taken away from the player. Now, there's a few little things that we need to do before that. We need to give the player a number of lives to begin with so that we can actually take something away from it. So what I've got is I have made an object called O Game Manager. Now, you could do this all into the player if you wish, but I'm gonna do it separately because it can give me a little bit more control. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into O Game Manager and I'm gonna create a new object, sorry, create a new event, and we're gonna add in a blue variable and we're gonna call this lives, and we're gonna set it to be three. Now, what you will notice is I've used lowercase lives there. You need to as well. And just to show you, it is L-I-V-E-S. Okay, so this now will make sure that the player has three lives at the start of the game. The next thing we need to do is to complete a collision between the player and the enemy. So to do that, I've opened my O player and I have my O enemy here. Now, if you don't have this already, what you'll need to do is go add event collision with the object O enemy. So when the player and the enemy collide, what we need to do is we need to say lives minus one relative. Now what that does is it takes one life off. Now at this moment in time, we haven't really got any way to show this lives anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my O game manager and I'm gonna add in a draw, a draw GUI. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna scroll all the way down here and we're gonna look for this here, draw value. And inside the speech marks here, I'm gonna say lives. Now notice I've used a capital here, I'm allowed to, because it's a label. And for the variable, I'm using a lowercase there, okay? So I've got uppercase there, lowercase there. Now I've left it at zero, zero for now, because I want it to be in the top corner. So let's just play this and see what happens. So you can probably see now lives is there and there's a three. Let me just change that to be a darker color. So if I say, draw color and we go and set this to a dark color. There you are, so you can see lives is three and when my enemy and player collide, let's see what happens, keep an eye on this. You'll notice now it goes down to minus 25 and there's a reason for it. As the enemy and the player are colliding, the enemy's going through it, so it's counting as a continuous collision. So we need to do something about that. Now, the easiest way is to make the player jump back to the start. And to do that, we need to go back to our player. And I'm gonna use a jump to, jump to start. So what this does, this will move the player back to the start. Okay, so when I hit, the enemy. There you are, you can see one has been taken away and obviously then I can go, I can actually still get into the minus figures, which isn't good because we haven't stopped that yet, but you can kind of see now what we are doing. 
Now the next part is to make sure that when we pick up one of these, we can actually gain a life as well. So let's first of all, work out what happens when we run out of lives. So to do this, what we need is a step event. And I'm gonna use an if statement and I'm gonna say if lives is, I'm gonna say less than or equal to zero, then what we're gonna do is you're gonna to go to room. Now, if I look for the room, if I scroll down and we're gonna drag this part here and notice where I'm putting it, I'm putting it towards the right hand side of this box so that the line then goes over to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is click on here, select asset, and I'm gonna choose the room I wanted to go to, which is my game over. So let's test this now very quickly. So what should happen now is when my player gets hit and loses three times. So here we go, one more, bam, game over. Good, we can see this is working. So we now have a process which is working. And we can also see the lives. So now let's get the live pickup working. So what I'm gonna do is open the lives here and we're gonna say in the O lives, if we have collision with the object player, so that's my O player, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say lives, and then one relative. What that does is it, that adds one back onto my lives. Now, if we just play this, it's gonna show a little bit of an issue. And the issue is our lives now is gonna become almost infinite, okay? So now as I hover over the lives, you can see my lives keep on going up and up and up and up and up. So what we need to do is once we've collected the lives, we need to destroy it. And handily, there's a bin here. And you can see that destroy there will work. Lovely. So now I have four lives. However, what you might want to do is limit the amount of lives that the player can pick up. So in that case, if you wish to limit it to say three, what we need to do is add an if statement. So we need to do a little test first. So we need to say if the lives is equal to three, then we don't really wanna do anything here. Now, what I'm gonna actually do is do this in a slightly different way, right? So I'm gonna say, if the lives is, if I say it's less than three and put this in, it would still allow me to do this. So I'm gonna say if the lives is not less than three. Now it's a little bit convoluted, but it allows me to use a little not and show you how this works. So the lives is three at the moment. So let's go down and you can see it picks up. Okay, why? Well, it wasn't less than three, right? So let's put it now. If I show you this once more, in fact, let me stop this for a second and add in another O lives, otherwise I'm gonna be chasing around. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is if we pick all these up, you can see it works there. However, if we go back to our lives, you can see it doesn't allow me to pick it up. Now, if I get hit, I can pick that up, but now I can't pick that up. So let's get hit again, and we're gonna go down to one this time. Okay, so I'm down to one, so now I can pick this up, get back up to three, so that works, okay? So what we're doing there is a little test to basically show that we can only pick up if we've lost a life, okay? Now, the last thing with this is, if we look back at our game, and we look at this, we can see the lives there, three. Wouldn't it be nice if lives was represented by a heart or a series of hearts? And we can do that. So let's just stop the game and go back to the game manager. 
Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just remove the lives variable from here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this option here called draw stacked sprites. And I'm just going to put this underneath. Now, what it's asking is draw stacked sprite. What sprite? Well, we need to select S heart or S lives rather. And we can either have it horizontal or you could have it vertically set and you can see it's got number and the x and y position now i'm just going to play it here just to show you what it's going to do first so you can see it's put a life in there but it's put it over the text so what we need to do is shift this over a little bit so let's shift this and put it over to 100 and you can see there now it's come over now that would allow me to make that a little bit bigger which we could do later but the problem is it's only displaying one. Why is it displaying one? Well, I've only got one here. Now, instead of putting a number here, we're gonna use the variable lives. And the reason we use that is because that will update for us. So watch this. Now we've put this in and we have our three here. Let's get hit by our enemy and let's get hit by the enemy again. Ooh. Now you can see when it goes, it disappears. That works beautifully. Let's lose a life and then we're gonna pick another few up. Okay, so let's have a look here. So we've lost that one. Let's pick one up, it comes back. We've lost it. Let's lose another one. Oh, we've lost it there. Now, the reason we lost that one was because I was probably too close and it hit the myself into the wall a few times. So that does work. Let's just get another test one let's get another one good let's get hit again bam bam okay so you can see now the life uh counter works with us so it'll increase then the image and it'll decrease it based on the variable as well and if you ever want to make that text look a little bit bigger and better then what you can do is you can create your own font there you can see I've got one already which I can't remember what I used but let's say for argument's sake now we're going to put this in so we set the font let's say font head in let's press play and there we are look I've got lives and then we've got the icons there. So that's how you build a full life system within your game.